Ancestral living, it's a term that we often hear about when thinking about people like Liver King, Carnivore MD, and many others that we've talked about on this channel. And it seems, oddly enough, that at some point, everything goes south for carnivore advocates. I don't know why, but it does seem that's the truth. We discussed on this channel how Liver King went from this extremely healthy, embracing guy to someone who's ripping cigarettes and drinking beers. We talked about Godus's attempted murder, and now that he's outwanted by the government, and all sorts of other weirdos at this point. Now, I don't think that all of these guys are freaks, but I do think that a lot of them are smoking something of a different strain from what the rest of us got. So let me just show you another individual who has taken things to the extreme. Frank Tofano. Tofano. Frank Tofano. Somebody touch my spaghetti! He is a protege of most of the carnivore advocates out there doing the whole raw meat eating, blood drinking kind of thing. Selling books and his way of life for a profit. Discussing that we as humans have forgotten our wisdom from long past. Teaching now that the foundation of the carnivore diet is much more healthy than other alternatives. Just about everything we've been told our entire lives is incorrect. From diet, to sun, water, and exercise. The modern culture we've grown up in has reduced our quality of life, and for some less fortunate, destroyed it. He has several courses for sale, such as a fitness routine, which can't be very good in my honest opinion, and of course a lot of detailed instructional things on how to do the carnivore diet. More than that though, which is really impressive, and maybe I need to increase my prices, for an email consultation he charges $150, for an hour-long call it's $300, and for the special price of $500 you'll get one one hour call times two with Frank. Now, before we get too far into the weeds, let's back up a little bit and talk about some more of the nuance. Frank Tafano started his YouTube career about eight years ago. He deleted hundreds of videos, so they're hard to piece together as far as where he started and where he's at now, but rest assured it was somewhere around eight to 10 years ago. He got on YouTube and started posting about his double jaw surgery. Essentially, he had reconstructive surgery on his jaw to change its position. He made a series of videos discussing the post op experience. Hey, what's going on? This is the first post-surgery video. It is Friday, May 27th, approximately three days after the surgery. This young Frank, looking quite beat up and bruised, had a very highly invasive surgery, and you could tell because his mouth was sewn shut for several weeks. Now, after these videos, you'll see that Frank quickly graduates to talking more about the carnivore diet, first addressing Jordan Peterson as being wrong about his take on the carnivore diet, him mentioning that Jordan Peterson saying you just need to eat muscle meats is completely impractical and not a healthy piece of advice. The first thing is the satiation aspect. People are saying eat as much as you want your body needs nutrition you need to eat you need to eat okay your body needs nutrition but you're telling someone to eat six pounds of grain-fed beef like that is the stupidest thing I've, I've heard like you're, you're telling someone to eat the least nutrient-dense animal food because their body needs nutrition do you have any brain cells serious I'm serious serious question and in this video you can see that Frank is quite witty he looks young has glowing skin and I would say that it's something most of us would aspire to do or to look like or to embody now he Keep this in mind. Interestingly, a near few months later, he posted a video saying, ending my YouTube channel, which evidently he didn't do. But in this video, he was saying that people were in his comments saying that he doesn't have the credentials to be showing people the carnivore diet. Therefore, he didn't want to get any hate. For a lot of reasons, I think I'm going to no longer be making YouTube videos, uh, mainly because of my lack of credibility in any professional training, whether you consider a doctor or a famous person or whoever's advice someone who did something for a long period of time. Uh, I don't really have any of those and I get discredited a lot whenever I make a video or what I say. I don't really have a support group. You know, I don't really feel like I fit in anywhere with my sort of diet or lifestyle. And I just I just feel like I'm kind of doing things for no, no reason. I feel like I have this information that's, you know, can help out a lot of people and it's, I'm just giving it away for free and no one, and I'm getting the opposite reaction that I actually want to. Frank also felt as if he lacked production quality. He mentioned that professionally, he lost some opportunities due to his YouTube channel not being of the highest quality and 
had to remove several videos, which made me wonder, what would someone have to post on YouTube to get opportunities taken away from them? Employment opportunities. It would have to be something pretty damning, pretty serious. Well, here's actually where things get really interesting. Frank has a sister who is mentally disabled, in which he blames the lack of nutrition that his mother had for causing that mental disability. Not because she couldn't eat the nutrition, but just because she didn't have the understanding of how to eat appropriately. This made me ponder some of the videos he was posting and I can't prove this, however, there is many comments suggesting that these allegations could be real. He essentially made videos where he claimed things like autism isn't a real disease and that you can fix these birth defects by eating correctly and even more specifically using the carnivore diet. Which, hey, there's some truth to that, but most mental disorders, as you and I would know, are mostly congenital. They, they happen before the birth or even conception has been been cultivated. We see the defects within the genetic encoding. It's not necessarily happening as the baby is being birthed or in the pregnancy in and of itself. Now, sure, there's things like drinking and smoking and doing other drugs that can manipulate the fetus, but that is pre and post pregnancy areas where you are highly advised about these things. When we're talking about nutrition, yes, you not having an adequate nutrition can affect your baby's metabolic rate, how much muscle they'll come out of the womb with, and many other things, but it generally won't affect their mental well-being as long as they have the basic nutrients to function as a living human being. Most mental orders are preordained. It doesn't matter how you eat as a mother. However, of course, like I said, living bad lifestyle habits isn't going to help and it can induce mental disabilities if you're drinking things like alcohol or doing various drugs or completely avoiding food at all costs. However, it seems like some of these radical claims saying carnivore can fix mental disorders in a fetus, that was what caused a critical view by some of his employers. Well, this of course didn't stop him. Even though he made a video saying he's going to quit his YouTube channel, he surely didn't. After he mentioned he deleted several hundreds of videos, he continued to make more not long after he posted this one. A lot more, for nearly six years, almost posting daily. However, these videos were a lot more censored and someone might call appropriate. I think he was kind of concealing some of the opinions that got him in trouble before. Now, this doesn't mean that all of his videos were a void of some questionable behaviors or statements. For example, he made a video labeled Baby Formula and Facial Development. In this video, he claims people are saying that the bags under his eyes make him look unhealthy and has become quite a contentious points within the criticism of his comments. Some people have said at least online that I don't look well or that I look unhealthy but let me tell you something in person although you know I have very like radiant skin almost glossy so I've never gotten that in person although I, could, I guess I could see in some videos why you would say that I'm relatively well very pale and have some slight bags under my eyes. I think don't look so good is, is the opposite of what I am to be honest but um, this video is just going to address the bags under my eyes and just talk about that and things are related to that. He goes on to claim that baby formula gave him poor facial development and describes how he was a triplet and out of the triplets he was the one that had a receding chin and his postulation was that it was because he got fed soy formula as a child compared to his twin brother who got goat milk. He thinks this was a pretty clear reason as to why his eyes and jaw which did require surgery were completely malformed. So here's my meat me, my brother, and my sister. Um, and we're gonna look at the, the jaw structure and the eyes real quick. So my brother who was fed goat milk formula has some bags under his eyes, but relatively wide jaw. You can see my, my sister's face here. As you can see, she has, you know, relatively poor facial symmetry, like her cheeks are bloated, her chin is receding, she has bags under her eyes. It hears me, although my cheeks aren't as puffy and swollen as hers, um, I do have some slightly puffy and swollen cheeks. My chin is receding, and uh, if you look at the bag eyes between me and my sister, they're, uh, mine might be a little worse, but they're about the same. Me and my sister were fed soy formula. My brother was fed goat milk formula, so the only thing that makes sense to me is that there are more nutrients in goat milk formula, and that's what attributed to my brother's superior facial development. However, he is Italian, which eye bags are a common trait when you are Italian. It's not a actually bad thing in some instances. Think about Sylvester Stallone. And truly, I believe this to the bottom of my soul, I don't think the formula had anything to do with male formation of specific structural components of his body. Now, I'm not here to argue that soy milk is as healthy as other variations, especially 
actually actual breast milk because that is very clearly understood. However, I would argue that it's not going to make a big difference in terms of facial structure. Okay, so fast forward and he continues to do a little bit of contentious stuff still, one of which he was eating rotten meat raw. Why people do this, I don't really understand. We talked about Gotis eating high meat, which is essentially the meat that is rotten and raw. And the reason it's called high meat is because it creates a sense of euphoria after eating it. In the instance of Gotis, it gave him a flesh eating bacteria, which he had to remain in the hospital for, for it to get treated. In the instance of Frank, he seems to be fine and did it a little bit better, I guess. But maybe this is just more of a clear depiction of his character versus anything, because ultimately shortly after this video, he starts eating raw fish organs, which I think is absolutely grotesque. Now, in complete honesty, in reviewing Frake's content, there is a lot of agreeable things that he has to say. He discusses the misconceptions with red meat being unhealthy, he discusses salt being wrongly taught as bad for you, and he discusses that vitamins are not needed if you are already eating a nutrient-dense diet, as you should be. These are all very agreeable things that have legitimate claims behind them, but at this point, around six years ago, Frank didn't have a ton of viewers. His videos didn't get a massive amount of traction. He would sure get the occasional video that had five to six K thousand views, but that's about it. Most of his videos were underperforming around a few hundred views. However, for the most part, his YouTube seemed to just be him posting his unfiltered, unedited thoughts about the carnivore diet and the lifestyle. But just about a year later, he really started to level up his titles and thumbnails. At this point, his thumbnails were a lot more catchy and clickable, and his titles invoked a feeling of questioning, of what could he be talking about. And so the views corresponded. He got about 10k views per video. Some videos in which he labeled drinking blood were in the thumbnail. You could see him with blood dripping down the sides of his face like a vampire. Or other videos where he reacts to people eating like a vegan diet. Other influencers. In specific, he talked about a Norwegian female as she was vlogging, and he reacted to it talking about her diet and how it was specifically aging her. This video achieved a substantial 232k views for the first time ever on his channel, and this therefore was ingrained in him to be his newfound tactic for getting promotional views. And this seems to be a tactic that many carnivores take, reacting to people in their diets and talking about how bad and lesser than they are as a human being for eating eating that specific diet, also talking about people's physical appearance as an outward show of their internal health, which I think most of you can pick apart the flaws in that logic. For instance, genetically speaking, people age at many different rates. You have some people who age biologically very fast, so they could be 70 years old but die of a heart attack and already developed dementia. You could have other people who are aging quite fast on the skin, but their biological age is quite young, and so they live into their 100s with a clear mind and able body. The biological age that you have is necessarily tied to your physical outward appearance. It is more of a marker of internal health and how your organ systems are functioning, which is the main system that keeps you online. And yes, your skin is an organ, but it is a protective organ. It is meant to get damaged just like a shield would be in battle. You're protecting yourself against UV rays all day, multiple forms of toxins and pollutants that hit and enter our skin, and then our skin has to shed itself to get rid of these things. It is by nature an organ that is supposed to age. There is some things that could tie this together when looking at vegans, such as the lack of collagen proteins or amino acids like proline. However, I would still say that a vegan is going to be beyond healthier compared to a normal person, a general population person, because they're going to have a leaner body mass index and they're generally going to have greater internal organ health. And so saying that their physical appearance is bad doesn't really give me any indication that you know more of what you're talking about than the other person. And because a person ages after six to seven years isn't really an outstanding fact. And in, in fact, a person ages most when they're going from 18 to 30s, and then thereafter, that's where the aging process generally slows down until you get into your later 50s again. But this is now our new meta for Frank. He simply reacts to people's poor diets, critiquing them, and specifically grifting about the vegan diet. Even bringing up our old friend from the channel, Vegan Gains. Quite a few times, actually. He seems to not very much so like Vegan Gains. As we go down this funnel of newfound content creation, 
we start to see Frank posting more frequently with unique thumbnails and titles. As a side note, this is his workout program. Why you don't need to bench press. Tell me if you think his workout program is worth buying. But shortly after, Frankie peaks around 2018, where he had really high quality thumbnails and stellar titles. We see a sharp decline in his content after this though. His views and overall subscriber count seem to decline precipitously. But why is that? What is changing? Well, it seems from just a brief overview of his channel content, he starts to get more skeptical and say things that are a bit more outlandish than what he was doing before. It seems that his content started to get more volatile. With videos labeled around this time period, why did the tigers get sick? In which he claims that tigers get sick because of cell towers. Why did the tigers at the Bronx Zoo get sick? I got an idea. Is that possibly why the tigers at the Bronx Zoo got sick? because there is a giant cell antenna pointed at the Bronx Zoo. And supposedly we must all get very ill from this too. Uh, he also frequents New York, so he should be very sick, but ultimately that doesn't seem to be the case. And in a video titled, No More Nutrition, question mark, spent 30K on YouTube, he talks about his videos being suppressed due to the things that he talks about. In depth, explaining that the government is keeping him down and suppressing his view counts on his channel. Interestingly, taking no care to admit that the subject of his videos seemed to rapidly change and the quality of his videos had suddenly declined after his peak in 2018. As well as Frank's character changed a lot over this period of time. He initially was very shy and humble, even admitting in that first video we talked about where he was thinking about deleting his YouTube channel that he didn't know it all and he didn't have all the credentials in the world to now posting videos where he is assuredly the subject matter expert and everyone should listen to him. Confidently assuring the audience that self towers make animals sick and that you should buy his fitness programs. He would continue to make content, however, talking about various different influencers and their unhealthy diets, and then discussing almost just about anything. China, politics, animals, trucks, cars, restaurants. I mean, there was really nothing specific in his niche anymore. He would literally talk about everything. And then suddenly, he gets sued by Paul Saladino, the other carnivore maniac. Paul sued him for selling similar products and supplements and stealing his intellectual property. In the video, he talks about this and how he was bankrupt before by another lawsuit that he had from Paul, and he mentioned that Paul was just afraid of Frank and that's why he was doing this. He, in fact, was stealing Frank's idea and therefore Paul Saladino is the one that's the bad guy in trying to get away from stealing his intellectual property. Yet later, he claims in this exact video that he can't defend himself in court because the higher powers are against him. There are secret societies out there that will not let him win in this court battle. But sadly, shortly after this video, he made another video claiming that he has now quit the carnivore diet after eight years because it made him feel like garbage and possibly because of the lawsuit. I'm not so sure. I hope you see a trend here. Frank has a history of being a bit less than what you might call stable. He bounces around radical ideas in an information bubble that just has people agreeing with him all day. And something happened recently that completely disfigured Frank, however, and I think a lot of people pointed it out. The loyal audience he had suddenly started to question his actions, which is what we're here to talk about. What I find interesting is the people that claim the most natural lifestyles and the most holistic ancestral lifestyles seemingly do the most unnatural things like liver king taking growth hormone. But of course, just like his double jaw surgery, Frank had another surgery to fix his baggy eyes. Again, sort of like Sylvester Stallone had and made billions of dollars off that look. He was quite insecure about these eyes. He mentioned them a lot in his videos, but oddly, it's something I don't think many people even cared about as he was notably a very attractive figure. He was a very dapper dude, a lot more so than most dudes out there in the space. That wasn't enough, however. He did get reconstructive surgery surgery around his eyes to improve the situation. But this is where things went terribly wrong. All right, guys, we're going to do an eye surgery update because it's had such a negative impact on every aspect of my life, business, personal, physical, mental. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like the end is in sight. Like, uh, he had cosmetic surgery in November, and after the surgery, he said he couldn't see straight and that his vision was so blurry he couldn't drive. There was also another problem. His eyes had become cross-eyed. Not really sure what happened, and he isn't either, but he said that he didn't really notice it until people started mentioning it. Oh, it's been one month since the date of my surgery, and I don't look like too much of a freak, so that's a great first step. 
Uh, it's supposed to be a three month process. So I'll start getting crazy in about a month if it doesn't look okay. Vision wise, very blurry. I have double vision past about 15 feet. It means I see two of the same thing. Makes driving very, very difficult. And I think I'm slightly cross-eyed. Some of you guys are saying I'm cross-eyed. I can't tell that well, which uh, I was not told about as a potential side effect of the surgery. So again, hopefully some of this stuff corrects itself. Comments are quite sad, however, after several surgeries to try to correct these issues, it's only gotten worse. Comments like, I kind of miss the old Frankie pre-eye surgery. Essentially what had happened is he had a prosthetic implant underneath his eyes. The goal was to lift his eyes and make them appear less saggy. However, one prosthetic didn't sit correctly and was a little bit higher than the other. This caused his vision to fall out of alignment and therefore his vision to become very blurry and uneven and possibly what led to his eyes getting crossed. Following the initial surgery, he had four additional surgeries to correct the fuck up. So why am I even telling you all of this? What is the point. You can really see fame affect people in the weirdest of ways. Some individuals on this very platform that, in this instance, feel more motivated to change their physical appearance because of mentions in the comments than to just live their life and ignore what people have to say. Frank felt so motivated to change his eyes since all of these comments had mentioned it, and this was from nearly eight years ago. From these constant comments to his rapid gain in notoriety, I'm sure it was difficult to balance out for a guy who is just taking his phone out every once in a while to record a quick video. As someone who has been posting online for numerous years, I can tell you that comments online do some really weird things to the psyche. You are hearing more of people's true thoughts that are completely unfiltered than you would anywhere else in life at any given time. Thankfully, I have a wonderful group of subscribers and an amazing set of people helping me out. However, when we have someone like Frankie posting nothing short of extremist views, saying really big things, claiming as if he has it all figured out, there's going to be some people who criticize him for this. And while there is a lot that buy in, there's also going to be many that disregard what he has to say and are very open about doing so. People start to launch hate towards their way about any little string of thing they can find. And soon all these catapults start launching towards your castle walls and eventually they break. And so does your self security. Now, as someone who's watching this, I assure you, you likely think people who post content and look at attractive and feel good about themselves, quote unquote, don't go around feeling insecure or wondering if their appearance is enough for other people. But I assure you, that is all too often the case. In fact, it's probably more of the case because those people have more eyes on them. I would actually say that about 90% of the time, these people are in shambles about their physical appearance and self-security. Even Gotis, someone me and Frank both spoke on, got a hair transplant after claiming you should live naturally and just go bald if you're going bald. You might think that there's an air of confidence around these people who post content so confidently and live these very specific lifestyles, but at the end of the day, they're just people like you and I, and they have many, many flaws. And with enough pressure, they feel driven to do very insane things, and they feel entitled that their audience gives them some way of life that others might not have. And so they get the positive feedback loop that they're always right about what they talk about and ignore some of the negative because it seems to be something that is just pure criticism and not constructive. And their audience tells them all along, you're doing a great job. And then we get people who are extremists, like Godis, committing or trying to commit murder. Ultimately, the goal is you have to find people who support you through whatever you're going through, but also aren't afraid to tell you the truth, to say, Whoa, man, listen, you're doing things far too much. Oftentimes, you have to avoid the comments, both positive and negative, because they don't really equate to much in your life. Sure, there's a little bit of truth in what everybody has to say, and that's just a hard fact of life. But at the end of it, what matters most is the people you surround yourself with and how they allow you to be as a human being. And ultimately, the goal is just to stay away from everything else.